Have you ever found yourself transfixed by the ethereal beauty of the Northern Lights? If so, you are welcome to venture into the bewitching domain of the Arctic, a region brimming with enthralling tales as hypnotic as the vivid colour palette dancing in its night sky. Within this frozen landscape, the Inuits, the indigenous inhabitants of the Arctic, have weaved an intricate web of tales and myths, withstand the relentless beating of, of time and natural elements. These narratives serve more than mere pastimes. They are threads of a vibrant tapestry of deeply embedded beliefs intrinsically connected to nature. It's a realm where every gust of wind, every crunch of ice, and every hushed whisper of the Northern Lights narrates an unscripted story. Today, we journey into one such narrative that sets the Arctic sky ablaze, the tale of the Northern Lights, or as they are scientifically known, the Aurora Borealis. To the less informed, these lights might merely appear as an extravagant spectacle brought about by the collision of solar particles and Earth's atmosphere. However, the Inuits behold this enchanting display with a completely different perspective. Within their cultural framework, the Northern Lights symbolize the spirits of their ancestors engaging in a celestial game of football with a walrus skull. Yes, you heard it right. This isn't just your regular terrestrial football match. It's a galactic tournament occurring in the heavens, resulting in a kaleidoscopic display that leaves spectators irrevocably mesmerized. In their belief, these shimmering lights are more than just a spectacle for the eyes. They are the ethereal embodiment of their ancestral spirits, gleefully dashing across canvas of the sky, chasing the walrus skull with boundless fervor. The game, as surreal as it may sound, is a bridge connecting the realms of the living and the dead. The spirits use the celestial football match as a beacon of communication, their energetic movements signifying their contentment in the afterlife. The vivacity of the lights correlates with the intensity of the game. The brighter the lights, the more vigorous the game is perceived to be. This tradition isn't just a nightly ritual or an entrancing spectacle. It's an enduring tradition that spiritually links the Inuits with their departed ancestors, a tradition that has been meticulously carried forward through generations. As the spirits play, dance and illuminate the night sky, they create a spectacle that has mesmerized countless generations of Inuits and explorers alike. So, the next time your gaze lands on the Arctic sky, always remember that you're witnessing more than just a natural phenomenon. Natural phenomenon. You're partaking in an age-old Inuit narrative, a celestial game unveiling right before your eyes. The Northern Lights indeed present a sight worthy of awe, but in the eyes of the Inuits, it's more than just a spectacle. It's a symbol of life beyond death, a dance of the departed spirits communicating from the celestial realm and an everlasting connection with their ancestors. This belief not only gives the Inuits a unique perspective on death, but also imbues them with a sense of tranquility about the afterlife. Inuit mythology, stretching from the celestial to the marine realms, is an intricate web of stories and lessons. Today, we journey through the poignant saga of Sedna, the esteemed sea goddess. A tale streaked with treachery, tragedy and ultimate transformation, Sedna's story is deeply woven into the rich fabric of Arctic mythology. The tale begins with a young Inuit maiden, Sedna, who lives a simple life with her father. This usual serenity of her life is cruelly disrupted when her father, the one person she should have been able to trust without question, betrays her in the cruelest way imaginable. When an unforgiving storm threatens their small boat, her father, driven by fear and self-preservation, throws Sedna overboard into the freezing, abyssal depths of the sea. In her terror, Sedna clings to the edge of their boat, desperate to survive, but her father, in a horrifying act of desperation, cuts off her fingers. As they sink into the sea, they undergo a startling transformation into seals, whales, and all the creatures of the Arctic Ocean. Sedna herself, swallowed by the icy waves, metamorphoses into the revered sea goddess. This unfolding of events is not merely a story of betrayal and transformation. It is a cautionary use to impart lessons about trust and the dire consequences of betrayal. The drastic transformation of Sedna from a regular Inuit maiden to a powerful goddess due to her father's betrayal is a lesson of trust broken and the repercussions it leads to. The tale of Sedna extends beyond the realm of ancient folklore and it is a cornerstone of Inuit culture 
molding their deep respect for the sea and its inhabitants. The Inuit strongly believe that if Sedna is displeased, she will withhold her sea creatures, leading to famine. To appease her, the sea hunters perform rituals and offerings, seeking her blessings for a successful hunt. These practices emphasize the Inuit's harmonious coexistence with nature, acknowledging the delicate balance of life in the harsh Arctic environment. The narrative also highlights the Inuit's understanding of transformation and their acceptance of the harsh realities of their natural surroundings. Sedna's story transcends the narrative. It's a symbolic representation of survival, resilience and adaptability, principles that are crucial in the harsh Arctic environment. Her tale, marked by treachery and transfiguration, serves as a vital reminder of the Inuit's reverence for the sea and its creatures. It's a mirror reflecting the Inuit's survival strategy in a challenging environment, their resilience in the face of adversity, and their ability to adapt to extreme conditions. Today, we venture into a journey that will take us from the silent depths of the sea to the snow-laden lands, to delve deeper into the legend of Nanook, the revered bear god, God. Deep in the sanctuary of the Arctic, where the snow enrobes the earth in an endless winter, we unfold an ancient legend. This is not just any story, but a tale that forms the lifeblood of the Inuit people's existence, the tale of Nanook, the master of bears. Nanook, a figure of authority and power in Inuit mythology, is celebrated as the ruler of bears. He's not merely a symbol of power, but a divine entity that holds the fate of the hunters within his mighty paws. His role isn't just to oversee, but to assess the intentions of the hunters, to decide if they are worthy of hunting these majestic creatures. Nanook performs this role with fairness, ensuring that the sacred bond between man and nature is respected, rewarding only those who understand its significance. But Nanook's legend is far more than a tale of authority. It's a narrative that brings to light the delicate balance that exists between man and nature. It's a story that instills the idea of respect for each life taken. The Inuit people uphold the belief that, that every living being has a soul, and every hunt is a significant encounter between two souls. Nanook, in his divine role, is viewed as the keeper of these interactions, ensuring that the bears are hunted with the proper respect and honor, thereby preserving the dignity of each life taken. This respect for life isn't one-sided. The hunters, in return, are expected to demonstrate the highest respect towards and the bears they hunt. How do they show this respect? Through rigorous rituals and age-old practices, rituals that have stood the test of time and are deeply rooted in their culture. These rituals include offering the first catch of the season to Nanook, using every part of the bear to ensure nothing is wasted and performing acts of gratitude before and after the hunt. These practices not only show their for the divine bear god and the animals they hunt, but also solidify their bond with nature. They believe that failure to show this respect would anger Nanook, who would then hide the bears or make their hunt fruitless. This deeply seated belief brings the community together, shaping their hunting practices and instilling an inherent respect for life in every Inuit. Moreover, the legend of Nanook serves as an homage, an homage to the complex relationship between the Inuits and their challenging environment. The bears are not merely a source of food, they are an integral part of the Inuit's cultural identity, symbolizing their hardiness and adaptability in the face of harsh conditions. The tale of Nanook serves as a poignant reminder of our inherent duty towards nature. It's a timeless narrative, carrying with it the wisdom generations, teaching us that every life holds immense value and respect for life ought to be the core of our existence. Nanook, the King of Bears, a tale that molds the Inuit's hunting practices, ingraining in them the deepest respect for the life they take. The legendary bear god continues to preside over the Arctic wilderness, silently guiding the Inuit people and persistently reminding us of our responsibility towards nature. Journeying from the land, we now raise our gaze to the heavens, coming face to face with Anningen, the moon god. In the far-off icy expanse of the Inuit universe, the narrative of Anningen, the moon god, commands a distinctive and prominent position. More than just a lunar deity, Anningen is the keeper of the night, dictating when the moon ascends and descends and ensuring the stars maintain their rightful positions. He is also the lord of the tides, his might driving the oceans to rise and fall, moderating the rhythm of the sea and its inhabitants. 
delving deeper into his celestial obligations, we discover a narrative swirling with love, desire, and unwavering pursuit. Anningen cohabited the heavenly domains with his sister, the Sun Goddess. Their relationship extended beyond familial ties. It was a bond which was profound, filled with deep affection and love. However, tragedy unfurled when this love crossed the boundaries of kinship, morphing into a forbidden liaison. Their romantic entanglement breached heavenly laws, leading to a scandal when their prohibited relationship came to light. As a result, Anningen, the moon god, was banished to preside over the night sky, while his sister, the sun goddess, was assigned to govern the day. Torn apart by the cosmos, they were fated to exist in eternal separation, trapped in an endless pursuit across the celestial vault. But this narrative extends beyond the realm of divine characters. It's a lyrical depiction of the natural world. The Inuit belief system attributes the waxing and waning of the moon as symbolic of Anningen's longing for his sister. His chase of the sun goddess across the sky leads him to neglect his nourishment, causing him to gradually diminish to a thin crescent. In his state of hunger, he disappears for three days to hunt. Upon his return, he reappears as a full moon, his vitality restored. The eclipses also play a fundamental role in this narrative. They represent the rare instances when Anningen manages to bridge the gap between him and his sister, their celestial bodies merging in a temporary incandescent union before they are forcibly separated again, doomed to continue their relentless pursuit. The tale of Anningen also sheds light on specific natural phenomena. For instance, the Inuit interpret the lunar cycle, the moon's transformation from a thin crescent to a full as Anningen's cycle of hunger and replenishment. The concept of eclipses, moments of a temporary union between Anningen and his sister, also constitutes a key part of this story, offering an explanation for such celestial events. In the Inuit understanding of the world, the tale of Anningen is not just a myth, but an allegory that provides a framework to comprehend and interpret the natural world. It's a story that breathes life and meaning into the eternal dance between moon and the sun, reinforcing the Inuit people's harmony with nature and the universe. Anningen, the moon god, a narrative that embodies the delicate balance of nature and Inuit mythology is far more than an anthology of gods and goddesses. It's a multifaceted and profound narrative that shapes the everyday life of the Inuit people. It's a compendium of survival strategies, a deeply rooted respect for nature and nature's laws, and a guide to understanding the environment they inhabit. From each tale that we traverse emerges a vibrant tapestry woven from the threads of Inuit culture that has been instrumental in their survival in the harsh Arctic conditions. The sagas of Sedna, the sea goddess, Nanuk, the bear god, and Anningen, the moon god, aren't merely stories. They each hold a significant teaching a survival strategy, a cultural norm, or a deep respect for nature, which forms the bedrock of Inuit life. The tale of Sedna, for instance, serves as a practical guidebook for the Inuit people, emphasizing the vitality of the sea and its creatures in their survival. More than a mere story of betrayal and transformation, it's an allegory for sustainable fishing practices that ensures a stable food supply for the Inuit. It's a stark reminder of the respect accorded to the sea and its bounties, a respect, a respect born out of necessity and reverence, and it serves as a constant reminder for the Inuit people on the importance of conservation and sustainable living. With Nanuk, the bear god, we see the embodiment of strength, endurance, and the indomitable spirit of the Arctic bear mirrored in Inuit life. This tale is a tribute to the bear, a creature that shares the Inuit's struggle for survival in environment. The tale serves as a communal guide reinforcing the importance of hunting ethically and responsibly, fostering respect towards the creatures they cohabit with, and ensuring the continued balance of the Arctic ecosystem. The tale of Anningen, the moon god, provides a framework for the Inuit's understanding of the celestial bodies and their influence on the Arctic's unique ecosystem. This cosmic journey underlines the cyclical nature of Arctic seasons that dictate the rhythm of life there. The tale helps the Inuit people anticipate and adapt to the changing seasons, preparing them for survival in the challenging Arctic climate. These tales, rich in symbolism and steeped in respect for nature, have shaped the Inuit people's approach to their environment, fostering a harmonious coexistence and a culture of resilience and ingenuity 
in a landscape others might deem inhospitable. Inuit mythology, in its depth and profundity, stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and our enduring quest to comprehend the world around us. As we bid adieu to the Arctic, we carry with us these tales of survival, respect and understanding as we continue exploring the rich tapestry of world mythologies. If you enjoyed our journey through the Arctic tales of the Inuit mythology, then we have a small request. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative and engaging. Your likes not only motivate us to deliver better content, but also help our videos reach a large audience. We would love to hear your thoughts on these fascinating tales. Do you have a favorite myth or a character that resonated with you? Or do you have other fascinating myths from around the world that you'd like us to explore? Don't hesitate to share your thoughts and ideas in the comments section. We're eager to see your perspective and learn from your insights. And finally, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss out on our future videos. We have many more captivating tales from diverse cultures and civilizations around the world waiting for you. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more captivating tales from around the world. Let's continue this journey of exploration and understanding together.